Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Revolution 2018. We are so delighted that you're here. Please go ahead and take your seats. We want to get started immediately. There are people here that are on a time constraint tomorrow, so we just want to make sure that they're able to get back and get back into their work environment. We want to respect their time. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. What a time to have a revolution. So we're going to get started in just a moment, but I wanted to introduce uh, a few people that are very, very precious to the Lamplighter family. How many of you receive uh, our postings? Okay, just about the whole room. Wonderful. How many of you have been on the Wednesday night phone calls, Wednesday night conference calls? Look at this. That's amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> it's kind of hard to get Jolene on the calls, but, you know, every once in a while she shows up and shines. But the most consistent people are mom and dad to the Lamplighter family, Bill and Marlene Brubaker. Would you stand up? In fact, come on up here. Come on up here, guys. They're the ones who keep us in line, so would you please just very briefly launch us into the worship time with a prayer? I believe in short, to the point prayers. <laughs> Holy Spirit, fill this room. Have your way. Have your way, God. Thank you for this gathering and for this lamplighter. Shine your light. Father God, we just thank you that this is a time to honor you and to honor each other. What a joy it is, God, to meet those that have prayed together, not seen their faces, but heard their voices. So, Father, we just come and we say, have your way. Holy Spirit, do what you do best. And we just want to say glory and honor, holy, 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 are you, Lord God Almighty, there is none like you. Bless this place. We bless you, God. We want to bless and honor you in your holy name. Amen. Can we stand to our feet? And let's just start this off right. The hallmark anthem of the American Revolution that we will have no sovereign but God and no king but Jesus. Can we declare together from Washington to Washington, no king but Jesus. Come on, I didn't hear you prophesy that out. No king but Jesus. Amen. These are the days of the turnaround. Dry bones, won't you rise? Dry bones, won't you rise and make a sound? Oh, dry wells burst up from the ground. Dry wells, won't you burst? Up from the ground, these are the days of the turnaround. Dry bones, won't you rise and make a sound? Rise up and sing of the return of the King of Kings. These are the days of the turnaround. Dry bones, won't you rise and make a sound? Rise up and sing of the return of the King of Kings. Come on again. These are the days of the turnaround. 
dry bones won't you rise and make a sound rise up and sing oh the return of the king of kings these are the days these are the days of the turnaround dry bones won't you rise and make a sound rise up and sing oh the return of the king of kings dry bones of the turnaround dry wells won't you burst up from the ground new life to give lord revive and renew us again these are the days of the turnaround dry wells won't you burst up from the ground new life to give lord revive and renew us again your Bones, won't you rise and make a sound? Rise up and sing, oh, the return of the King of Kings. Come on, he's coming right back. These are the days of the turnaround. Dry bones, won't you rise and make a sound? Rise up and sing, oh, the return of the King of Kings. To rise. of the turnaround dry wells won't you burst up from the ground do life to give lord revive and renew us again these are the days of the turnaround dry wells won't you burst up from the ground do life to give lord revive and renew us again Tide is 
turning, the tide is turning, changing hearts, changing hearts again. The river is rising, the river is rising. Who will go? Who will go in? The tide is turning, the tide is turning, changing hearts, changing hearts again. Changing hearts, changing hearts, changing hearts again. Oh, come and change your hearts, change your hearts again. Change your hearts. Change our hearts again. Change our Sound the alarm, gather the people, gather the elders, let the ministers well. Bring back the years, the enemy stolen. Lord, you are coming with a holy visitation. Gather the elders, let the ministers well Take back the years, the enemy stolen Lord, you are coming with a holy visitation Let the ministers well take back the years the enemy stolen. The Lord, you are coming with a holy visitation. Sound the alarm, awaken the watchmen. 
open their ears, let their voices be loud. We prophesy, you come to this nation, touch this generation with a holy visitation. the alarm, awaken the watchman, open their ears, let their voices be loud, you'll come to this nation, touch this generation, the holy visitation, Turn to you. Come on, every hand lifted right now. With fasting and weeping and mourning, we return. We return to you. With fasting, weeping, and mourning, we return. We return to you. Yeah. With fasting and weeping and mourning. Oh, my Lord, you're returning. We lie here weeping between porch and altar. Pour out your spirit on your sons and your daughters. We lie, we lie here weeping between porch and altar. Pour out your spirit on your sons and we your daughters. We lie here weeping between porch and altar. Pour out your spirit on your son. One more time, we lie. We lie here weeping between porch and altar. Pour out your spirit on your sons and your daughters. We dance and we shout. We lift up our voice as your kingdom come down. We dance, we shout. Your kingdom come down. We dance, we shout, we lift up our voice. Let your kingdom come down. We dance, we shout, we lift up our voice. Let your kingdom come Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your let your kingdom come. 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 Your will be done. Kingdom come. 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 Will be done. Kingdom come, will be done. Kingdom come, will be done. Let your kingdom come, will be done. Kingdom come, will be done. 
kingdom come will be done. Let your kingdom come will be done. Kingdom come will be done. Kingdom come will be done. Let your kingdom come will be done. Kingdom come will be done. Gather the people, gather the elders, and the ministers will take back the years the enemy stolen. Lord, you are coming with a holy visitation. Sound the alarm, gather the people, gather the elders, let the ministers will take back the years, the enemy stolen. Lord, you are coming, the holy visitation. Come, come, Lord, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come on, lift your voice right now. Holy Spirit, come. We long for you. Our heart longs. Our heart longs for you. Nothing else will do, God. Nothing else will do. It's only you. Nothing else will do. sing that out. Fasting, weeping, and mourning, we return. We return to you. Fasting, Pour out your spirit on 
Come. 
we're here, Lord. You are why we have come from all over the nation, God, all over the world. We have come to lift up your name. Cheryl was singing, we are yours. We are yours. We are yours. Sing that out, come on. And we are yours. Tell him.
just the voices, just the voices. Holy yeah, yeah, yeah. Spirit, come here. Sing it again. why we've come Lord we've come to be with you we've come to lift your name we've come to praise you we've come to glorify you come to honor we come to honor we come to honor you we are hungry for visitation Lord we were hungry for, hungry for you. Jesus, Jesus. Let's sing his name. Jesus, yeah. I hear the Lord saying that all of you, we've come to encourage those of you who live in D.C. and who work here. And I'm seeing in this week of illumination for Hanukkah that you carry the light into every place that you go. And for many people, it's a thankless thing. But the Lord wants you to know, he said, I see what you're doing. I see your sacrifice. I see what you're giving. I see what you're standing in to encourage and strengthen and to bring forth what I want done in this city and in this nation. Because this city holds many things in place. And the Lord says that as you pray, as you seek his face, as you move forward with him, he is going to answer your prayers. He's going to fulfill what he's called you to do. It is not in vain. You have not been worshiping or praying or calling down heaven in vain. You are doing it for my glory. And I see you. And you are like the serving girl that served the king. And there is a kingly reward for each of you. Let's thank God for the word. Ann Tate, glory of Zion.
chains that bind your children freedom from the chains that bind our praise to you freedom from the lies of the enemy freedom we cry I cry, I cry freedom from the chains that bind our children. Freedom from the chains that bind our praise to you. Freedom from the lies of the enemy. Freedom, we cry. I cry freedom from the chains. Come on, sing it out. That bind your children. Freedom from the chains. That bind our praise to you. Freedom from the light of the enemy. Freedom.
sing. We cry. You sing. You sing. Come on. can feel her coming in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. Oh, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh Lord, I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. Oh Lord, yeah. Feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh Lord, I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. Oh, I can feel it.
for this moment in history. It's the fullness of you. All my life, I have been waiting for this moment. It's not tomorrow. It's now down the road. It is right now. The window of God is open right now to see the dream of His heart come to pass. We don't have to wait tomorrow for turnaround. We don't have to wait tomorrow for the move of the Holy Spirit. Can, can you feel it legitimately? Are your insides quaking? Because that's what I'm feeling right now. Come on, let's sing that again. I can feel it coming. We have reached the moment right now to set a new course for our nation. A new birth of freedom. I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. I can feel it. I can feel it coming in. It's like the rumbling of a train. It's coming with strength. An unstoppable train. A glory train. Coming into the house. I've been waiting for this moment. I've been waiting all my life. All my life. Oh Lord, I can feel it. I can feel it coming in the air that we step into this. No more delay. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. The window 
channels of access over Washington, D.C. are open, open, open. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, oh, oh. I've been waiting for this moment. Jamie Jackson. He brought his entire team up here from Brunswick, Georgia. The Remnant Band, Jamie and Radonna Jackson and team. And uh, we thought we were going to be in the Museum of the Bible tonight, launching Revolution. But God had other plans. Can we thank God to celebrate freedom in the Trump International Hotel? We are getting back on track. This train has come into station. We are now in the turnaround that God has prophesied. And we are setting a new course, a new way forward for this nation. So Jamie had this prophetic word in a dream. You may be seated. Jamie saw in a dream last week, he was driving my car in the dream. I'm like, yeah, Jamie, you can drive my car in your dreams. In the dream, he was driving the car and I was navigating and I like just spaced for a moment. I stopped paying attention and when I did, Jamie looked over and said, isn't that the turn we're supposed to make? It was a right turn, a hard right turn. And I said, I honestly don't know. I, I missed it with the GPS. And in the dream, we went way off in a wrong direction, and it took a long time to get back on track. So we've been praying since last week. God, we want to stay alert as Shamar Watchmen. And we want to make the right turn when you give us that GPS directive. A hard right turn. I gotta tell you, the past 24 hours have felt like a hard right turn. But it's gotten us on track. It's very interesting when we pulled into the Trump International Hotel today, we gave the keys to the valet and they gave us a ticket and the ticket for my valet is 7222. <laughs> Daniel 722, as you know, because you've heard it for the past six years about judgment rendered in favor of the saints 
restraining the enemy, releasing the saints to possess the kingdom. And we roll into the Trump International Hotel and they say, here, sir, put this on your windshield. Seven, two, two, two. We are in the Daniel 722 turnaround right now. Even the Trump International Hotel is prophesying to us. As we speak tonight, Jewish leaders from across the nation are being hosted by President Trump in the White House for a Hanukkah celebration. When I was praying into this word that my friend Jamie gave, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he says, I've given you a mandate to complete the turnaround in 2018. And I say to you, the clear direction and governmental anointing you expected to experience in November for this nation is coming by my spirit over Hanukkah. That's right now. Stay tight with me and tuned to my Holy Spirit. Watch with me, allowing no room for fleshly distraction. I am navigating you into a hard right turn which will preserve you and set you on the right course to your desired end. What we all expected as a move of God, maybe in November, is right here, right now. A hard right turn, not right versus left, but right versus wrong. Deliverance from the accusations of the accuser. Deliverance from the, the vileness of the uh, hatred and the prejudice that is empowered. God is raising us up in a freedom movement and there is no room for prejudice. There's no room for hatred or vitriol. It's time for a new way forward for our nation. It's time to set a new course for freedom. And I believe that God summoned us here at this very time because he wants to hold court and grant this turnaround to a nation that desperately desires it. I would say to a city that desperately needs it. Can we agree on that? We bless President Trump even as he is sitting with the elders of the Jewish community globally tonight and celebrating Hanukkah. And we just celebrate with President Trump, the Jewish community, the Festival of Lights. You know, Jolene and I were married on the first day of Hanukkah in 2003. This is actually our menorah. I knew you guys would be very interested in seeing this, so this is our menorah that we had for our wedding. As we got married on the first day of Hanukkah, we saved the center candle for our unity candle, and we're going to light the menorah. We're going to light the unity candle on the first day of Hanukkah. God had other plans. While we were worshiping the Lord, my best man, Will Ford, turned to me, and he pointed to the menorah, and that center candle had lit in front of everyone as we were singing, glory, glory, send your glory. And I believe that as we enter into this Hanukkah experience now, the Lord is sending fresh fire to you. Tonight with Chuck Pierce and this entire weekend, we are going to see the Lord light our lamp supernaturally. You may feel burnt out, you may feel pressed down, you may feel like there's no oil of provision for you, but God is opening up his storehouse and he is making a way where there is no way. Say this with me, God. God. Light my lamp. Light my lamp. Send, your fire. Send your fire. Light my lamp. Light my lamp. In 
Jesus' name. Wow. Well, what a way to start off Revolution 2018. I guess I better put this back now. I want to share one more thing briefly, and then we want to get Chuck Pierce up to pray, prophesy, and do whatever he's going to do. He has full course. Before Chuck comes, can you just, Jolene, stand up, and would you just welcome my wife, Jolene, just... The dream of my heart, the love of my life, the prophet in the family. I want to share with you just one more thing I think you might find of interest, especially if you haven't been following along with our postings. Because a guy from another stream prophesied about this very moment. We are friends with Bobby Connor. He's a prophet. We honor him as a prophet. He's really impacted our lives many times. But uh, it's, we get to see each other maybe two or three times a year. And I don't think Bobby Connor knew that we were having a revolution gathering when he prophesied this, but just last week, he had an encounter with the Lord, and he actually posted it, and we got sent this posting about how Bobby, in a dream, saw this brilliant light, and he knew he was in a courtroom setting, and there was only one person there, and all of a sudden, the courtroom, I guess, filled up, but the shining of the Lord came through, the shining of the Ancient of Days as he took his seat. The Ancient of Days took his seat over heaven's court. And here's what the Ancient of Days said. He heard the gavel come down. And he heard the Lord declare that a righteous revolution is now being released. I guess as his verdict. Did you hear me? Last Wednesday, the prophetic word went forth that a righteous revolution is being released. Why is this revolution being released, Bobby asked. And he said, to bring America back. To turn America back to the Lord. And Bobby then said, the Lord thundered, court is now in session. Now, again, he didn't know about our revolution gathering. He didn't know that we have a focus on Daniel 7.22 in heaven's court and seeing judgment rendered in a way that shifts our nation out of the the wrong way and back into the right way and releases expedited justice, especially to the saints of God. He didn't know the covenant dream that we have to see America shift. And that that's a focus primarily of, of, of revolution every year. So I just want to say this. All rise. We welcome you, Ancient of Days, to preside over this court, to render and perpetuate this verdict of justice in favor of the saints, this verdict that brought a catalytic shift in our nation over these past two years and realigned us with your covenant city of Jerusalem and your covenant land of Israel. We just declare court is now in session.
Chuck, it is only fitting to honor uh, a man of your stature. We so deeply respect you. We have a special gift for you. You can please go ahead and open it. This is wine from Shiloh, Israel, and it has a menorah on it. It's called menorah wine. It's the year of the new wine and the new wine skin. We got something else in there for you, Chuck. We got to go over to the Supreme Court the other day. You probably have one of those already. But you don't have one like this because I knew we had to go over to the Supreme Court and get a new gavel for the new season of the Supreme Court now that Justice Kavanaugh has been seated and this covenant with death and hell that has kept our nation in bondage is annulled. It is a new verdict being rendered by a judge with a new gavel. We are seeing judgment in favor of the saints. Chuck, please come. Wow. <clears throat> That's awesome. It's awesome to be here. I was flying back from Hong Kong, I think it was in, and uh, I wrote Brian just as he was writing John and Jolene to say, I don't think it's going to work for Chuck to be here because he's just getting back and we're having a, a thing where we host the city at our place and the region. and. I wrote him on the plane and I said, I'm supposed to go to Washington, D.C. and be with John and Jolene. He said, well, that's going to be difficult for you because you've only got the one day here and then you go to Barbie Yoder's. And I said, yeah, but I heard the Lord say I'm supposed to go. I'm just not supposed to go to that place they're meeting in. And I wrote him that. <laughs> well... I could have, but I prefer when the Lord just sets it in order. I was just in South Texas. We were just there. We flew to McAllen, and we were there. <coughs> and uh, James Keller got up and shared, because the border is so significant right now. As we pray along the border, as we gather and worship along the border. And James got up and shared, and he said, you know, I remember the first time that Chuck came down here. I had rented a hotel uh, conference room for us, and he called me three days before we were coming and said, James, the Lord said the Sheraton. He didn't say that hotel, and he said, well, we'll get the Sheraton the next time you come. I said, well, okay, that'll be good, too, and the next night that hotel burned down. And he said, from then on, I decided I would listen better. <laughs> but it's, it's just because God has a place for us. And we were supposed to be in this place. It was important for us to be back here. Uh, we were here, I know I was here in February, and it was just important to be back here. It was important to come back and and be here and to keep this portal open under this covering and so so good to see so many of you here i've seen vermont here i've seen pennsylvania i've seen georgia washington i've seen uh so many uh, uh different when you go, come to a gathering like this you get to see people that you know, are praying with you or praying for you. And so it's a real honor, but it's also a real honor to have uh, uh, with us that met us here tonight to come is uh, a lady who's the COO of Easter Seals. Welcome Angela Williams here. Angela, stand up and let them welcome you. 
she's lived and worked here in D.C. for 15 years. And it's also to have one of my dear friends from uh, the World Bank here. And we always want the World Bank here. Yolanda, stand up and just wave at him. It's great to have her. And then the last time I saw this fellow, we were celebrating Shiloh, um, the menorah <laughs> Shiloh wine. Uh, but we were celebrating my new grandson, Shiloh, at the, uh, and it was just a blessing to do that at, in September. And so please welcome Rick Ridings here. Rick, what a blessing. That grandson is growing. Uh, Israel's moving forward. It's, uh, it's amazing to see what the Lord has done in Israel. Now, I hear uh, a lot about America from other nations because I travel in other nations. And I'm in so many different nations. And you get a perspective about us that you don't get from us. It's sort of like family, you know. You might think your family's great until you go to your neighbors and have a coffee. And, and then you get a different perspective. I know I did when a couple of my boys were growing up, and uh, we figured out that the people were <laughs> behind us were making moonshine. And I went over to see them, and two of my boys were there. So I got a totally different perspective <laughs> of them. And, uh, uh, but it was good. It was good. <laughs> and it's usually good, the perspective we get worldwide. I think the world sees us a lot better than we see us. I think Israel sees us a lot better. And when it boils down to it, that's all we really care about, isn't it? Because that's where it's all going to end up. And our relationship there, that's where it's going to end up. And we have to say we have never had a president that has boldly proclaimed Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. <laughs> let's stand up and let's thank God for that. Now, <laughs> he, I, it's amazing. It, it really is amazing what that did and how that has affected the world and uh, what it's doing worldwide and how it's realigning nations. And then today, right before coming, we watched the uh, final homegoing of um, Mr. Uh, Bush, who was such a statesman and devoted servant to our nation. And... Uh, to watch him uh, go on, I really believe with Billy Graham going on and with him going on, that did end an era in this nation. Let's thank God we're in a new era now. Now, <clears throat> the Lord uh, said several things to me uh, from that, and I want to share some things tonight. And then I told John, I, I want to be able to share some things that we look at and we are able to take some notes on so we carry away from here some prayer points, but there's certain things I, I can't share without just prophesying, and then uh, I know Rick and other people will be here to try to help us through it. So we and I see South Carolina back there to help us through it because it's very key right now that we hear what the Lord is saying to us and move forward and uh, revolution is an interesting word because it can mean an overthrow. Now, uh, the next thing I want to do, I want to thank God for Judah. That was really good. Let's thank God how Judah went first. I love that song. That song was awesome. That turnaround song was awesome. And <clears throat> revolution can have an interesting meeting. It can have a, a meeting with connotations of rebellion. Uh, looked with it, and our nation, uh, without it uh, having revolution in its bloodstream, I don't think we would have ever changed. But 
there's a cry of revolution that's rising up in the body of Christ. And I'm not sure it's just a governmental cry. Because revolution can have another meaning also. It can mean a whirlwind that creates a new cycle. Now look at somebody and say, lots of whirlwinds on the way. So that says to us that lots of incredible whirlwinds are coming. And remember, Job heard the Lord in the whirlwind. And so we're going to have to listen for the Lord in ways that we've never listened for Him before. And a matter of fact, I just finished, Linda Heidler and I just finished a new book and, uh, because this year is linked with women. And put your hand on your neighbor and say, get ready. And... <laughs> And there's two words that stir up the body of Christ. I read an article about one of them with you with the apostolic. Uh, there's two words that stir up the body of Christ, the apostle and woman. So I just put them both together and we did this book. Because we need to understand this is the year the apostolic woman arises. I mean, she will be seen. And uh, that's not just a church girl either. And so we have to understand that things are changing, and the apostolic woman is what the bride of Christ will look like in this season. So I want to encourage you. That book is really good. It's good for your friends. It's good for men because it's very uh, biblically sound and encourages you to see women uh, uh, for the way they are. And so uh, it becomes important. Now, let's look at a few things, and then I want to come back to some things I know the Lord is saying to me tonight and why he brought us here. Now, I think he brought us here because we needed to be here. Pa hey, Bonnie. Pat your chair and say, I just needed to be here. See, he predetermines our times and our places. That's what Acts 17 says, that we can grab hold of him and pull him down into the place that we're at. And it's also understand that it's very important that we understand timing. And because timing is very key. God's not in time, we're in time. And therefore, uh, we have to understand that we're, giving, we're given this opportune moment to create. Everybody say the word create. create. Now, what we do here tonight is creative. And what we decree here tonight creates. It will leave a residue in this place. And it will go into the atmosphere and begin to move. And that's very key for our uh, victory that we're in. And so... Here we are in Hanukkah. You've already heard that. The Feast of Light. How many of you have never celebrated Hanukkah? Well, you're doing that right now. Because it was important that they... Uh, it's the only New Testament feast that you really read about that was not initiated in the Old Testament. And Jesus celebrated it. Yeshua celebrated it. And it's linked with dedication and it's linked with light. It's linked with the ability to withstand so you can dedicate, dedicate your future. And it really shows us these four things that God cares for his people. Now, I want us to understand God loves this nation. And he cares for the remnant in this nation. Now, there are some interesting things going on, but God is watching this nation right now. Another thing is, Hanukkah always represents that he wants the temple restored. He wants his, his body, his uh, um, gathering place restored in a way that we can uh, see him and that we have an altar of restoration that we can come to. 
And uh, so that's very important when you're thinking about Hanukkah. It, it signifies God as the God of miracles. Hanukkah is about a miracle moment that occurred where oil did not run out. Look at somebody and say, you might feel weak, but your oil's going to sustain. But it's also a time to shine. Everybody say shine. shine. Isaiah 60 is about shining. It's about us shining into the future. And when we celebrate it, all of a sudden, these things began to be activated. And here we are in D.C. celebrating Hanukkah tonight, and it becomes very important. Now, we're not Jewish. We are actually uh, uh, grafted into this celebration, so it becomes very important on us understanding the timing of this fifth day of Hanukkah. Because there's a supernatural grace today to break into our future. And I believe God ordained this fifth day here to break into the future of this nation in a new way. You see, our uh, former president, which is uh, a legacy, and the family is a legacy, going into the ground. And the Bible says when a seed goes into the ground, lots of things begin to come up from it. And I, I think the thing that I thought about the most was his tenure as CIA director. And there's a lot of things he knew that now's about to rise, that is now rising up and will begin to rise up. We'll start seeing this Russian thing begin to shift starting tomorrow. God brought us here. We'll start seeing things happen that will realign the world and start things beginning to move because the seed went into the ground that from someone who served faithfully a nation and therefore we'll see things happen. Go ahead, Chad. Now, with that, we have to also know we are breaking out of old ways of thinking. You cannot think the same old way. And we're all going through a process, and we're actually going through a, um, I'd have to say, a lot of, I don't want to say warfare, I want to say uh, a lot of intense conflict. Conflict means warfare, but I think there's an intensity that's going on. And that's what really brings me to Daniel chapter 7. Because the word that I always remember from Daniel 7 is that there's this amazing conflict going on in the atmosphere. And the Ancient of Days is beginning to come into his position in the midst of the warfare, but it also talks about how the enemy is speaking and wearing down the saints. And in the midst of wearing down the saints, what that word means is he is causing your mind and your way of thinking to grow weary. And all of a sudden, the Ancient of Days comes in. Now, I've looked at this a couple of ways because I think we had to be worn out. Because we had too much understanding of what we wanted. Therefore, without us being worn out, we won't be able to see the Ancient of Days make his judgment. And so we're in a process now of starting to see new decrees come into position. But it came from a wearing down season of thought processes. Now that's the way you want to look at it. Look at somebody and say, I'm just plumb worn out. I'm telling him. I mean, the media has about worn us out. All the opinions have about worn us out. 
the trials we've been in have, have about worn us out. But it's because we're getting ready to think differently. Tell somebody, you're going to start thinking in a way you've never thought before. I remember one time I got so worn out. I mean, we were in such warfare. Uh, my wife, who couldn't have children, our first 10 years of marriage, had gotten pregnant. And in the third month of the preg, in the two and a half months of the pregnancy, she uh, contracted some way. There's five torch syndrome viruses. And she contacted three of them. Well, one of them deforms the fetus. And uh, there she had three of them when she was tested. We were, I was the executive director of a children's home, the second largest children's home in Texas. And uh, it was just all those years of pressing through. God had healed her miraculously. Uh, and there this was going on. She lost use of her arm. It, it actually withered up like this and uh, she was in the hospital there was nothing she could do in the hospital she was pregnant finally I never will forget one of the nurses came in and said uh, you still have a fever but there's nothing we do she threw the pillow across the room at her I just loved it <laughs> she said this is wasted time and effort for me I'm leaving and we got up and left from the hospital because it was it was just crazy to be there there was nothing we could do it was so warring, wearing out I got a notice from when I had left my position in the oil company that I owed taxes we were in two audits in this children's home I mean it was just worn out I was down to $76 I mean it was pitiful and I went out and wrote it all down. It was seven different things. And held it up to the Lord and said, read this. <laughs> I was on my knees out in the field. I said, would you read this? This is the biggest mess I have ever been in. And I heard the Lord speak to me and he said, buy your wife a new dress. So that Friday, we... I mean, you know, when all else fails, I guess. And we went out, we went out, we found, because she was starting to show, she was a seamstress, she couldn't use her arm. And she, so I bought her a dress, we went out to eat, we had $3 left, we went to church, I, the, they passed the plate by, I threw the $3 in the plate thinking the heavens would open up. All of a sudden, the pastor started preaching. And he was pre. It was, uh, it was a fairly large Baptist church that I'd been on staff at one one other time, and he started preaching that how healing was not for today. I said, Lord, what is this? And all of a sudden, would they had a hundred and forty person choir. And my wife, who is so straight-laced, all of a sudden she stands up in the choir and starts waving her hand while he's preaching. I said, what in the world is she doing of all the times for her to raise her hands? What is wrong with her? We got outside and I said, listen, that message was from hell. She said, what message? I said, he preached healing one for the day. She said, look, I reached down to pull my pantyhose up, and all of a sudden, God healed my arm. <laughs> she said, I am so glad the Lord did not listen to him. <laughs> Everything started falling in place. Now, I'm telling you that for a reason. You might be worn out tonight from what you've gone through the last three years. And I'm saying three years for a reason. But things are about to shift for you. Let's thank God for that. <clears throat>
Now, let's look at this. this. This is what the year looks like. It's a structure coming. Now, this is what's hard with Washington, D.C., because we have to see a glory structure get established. We have to see something representing his people established in this city so that the wine that has been forming over the last seven years can be pressed out and all of a sudden we can go into new fields that we've never gone into before. Everybody say new fields. Now, this is what the year looks like. We always try to create a symbol for the year, and this, you see the season in the center of it, the chrono season, the 70. That's why this 70-year issue has been so important this past year of what's been going on with Israel, what's been going on with us. And you're going to see even more tonight because this 70 season is key. In this ninth year of Tate, like Ann Tate, uh, T-E-T, it actually means that you can look at it and you can see things. You can see this is a year, it looks like a womb. So this year is the birthing year at the end of the season for what God is ready to birth. And you're going to have to look back at all what you've gone through. And you're just going to have to say, Lord, I've got to cut my losses. I've got to allow you to strengthen me in a new way because it is time for the birthing. Now, it also looks like a snake. So that says a lot of conflict. And the word actually is linked with a snake, a serpent. And so it's a lot of conflict. So the best way to understand this year is Revelations 12, how in the midst of our uh, um, issues and our travails, we triumph. Look at somebody and say, you're going to overcome. (laughs) But the year is also linked with goodness. Now, goodness means... I will get you on the right path, and on that path, I will meet you in some supernatural way. Now, that's what he did with y'all. That's why we're here. I will get you on your right path if you will choose that path that I put you on. I'll meet you, and goodness and mercy will follow you because already on that path, I have established what you need. And so, this summarizes what we're heading into. In other words, vision we've been praying into starts becoming reality. And we start experiencing God's goodness in a whole new way. Now, I want you to think about things that you have trusted the Lord for, but you've not been able to touch them and pull them down, because it's very important tonight here in this gathering. Now, with that, we also, we just sang this a moment ago, this is a year of Holy Spirit movement. We are coming into a new move of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is moving in a new way. We sang uh, from Ezekiel 37. We sang from Joel chapter 2, 1 through 3, actually. And it says, multitudes, multitudes are in the valley of decision. That means there's a great choice over the movement ahead. And so we're in a conflict over choosing the movement. Now, that's a word for what this nation is going through. We're in a conflict over choosing the movement. And I don't think we have determined how we're going to choose yet. And that's why it was important for us to be here. 
and move forward. Now, what the Lord brought me here for was at there's two things in the New Testament he says. He says, if I came back to earth today, would I find faith? In other words, I'm not worried about when he comes back. I just want to be assured that wherever I'm at, I'm exhibiting faith. I don't want to be bogged down. You have to exhibit as much faith in a death situation as you do in a life situation. And all God's looking at right now is the faith element of how we're in operation. Then he says something else here in Luke 12, 37. He said, Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. So in other words, he's looking for faith and he's looking for watching. So what the Lord is telling me is that there has to be initiated a whole new watchman movement. And we have to know what we're looking for right now. We have to start watching in a way. We are actually at the end of an era. Now, you've heard that. You've heard it from the world. You've heard it from key leaders. We are at the end of an era, but I'm not sure we are focused over what we're looking for. And every time we come to a place like this, I think God refocuses us. And that's what this gathering is about, getting us refocused so we can move into what he's saying. And then remember, he has a time, everybody say time, where he visits. Now that means the bishop comes to audit. That's what the word means. He visits cities. And he visits people. And so we're in this incredible time of visitation. You can expect visitation this year. He's going to surprise you. Right now, he's looking at us and he's saying, get certain things in order. I've watched your assignments from the past. I've watched how well you've done with them. I've watched where you haven't done well in them, but now I'm auditing uh, uh, what's going on. I'm sending you back, and I'm sending you forward. I'm doing both at the same time. That's part of the whirlwind because it's creating a cycle of moving from your past quickly from areas that you almost were worn down and got lost in your faith in into a new explosion of faith and into new vision. So how many feel like a whirlwind swirling? I mean, you feel a whirlwind going on up in the atmosphere, but I am here to prophesy when you see that whirlwind come across Pennsylvania this year and then come through Maryland and into D.C., you're going to know that God has said, I have come to secure my path for the future. And so this is an interesting time of visitation. He visited, he wept over Jerusalem. That means, just think about, that was God as man expressing emotion over something he was looking for that he didn't get to see. That's amazing. And we've all been there. He wept over Lazarus. You know why he wept over Lazarus? Because the people uh, still hadn't broken in to understanding what God was about and that resurrection power was theirs for the future. And all of a sudden he wept and in the midst of it, he, uh, uh, Mary and Martha both questioned. The disciples, I remember in John 11, he looked at, uh, he looked at them and said, How long are y'all going to be with me? You've been with me all this time, and it's like you know nothing. And he wept. 
But then he demonstrated. See, there comes a time of visitation. That's what this time of year always reminds us of. Even though uh, uh, Robert always teaches that the Lord was born, uh, he was conceived during this time and born during uh, uh, Feast of Tabernacles, you began to see, though, that hovering power of the Spirit of God visiting Mary. Now think about that. Think if you got visited like that. Turn to somebody and say, that was quite a visitation. <laughs> You're going to have to try to explain some things, aren't you? Walk some things out. And then he visited Zacharias. Think about that one. He, that was such a visitation, he shut his mouth for six months. That might be the visitation we all need here. <laughs> Lord, we loose that over Washington, D.C., now, now, so in the midst of it, it is so key that we see we're in not only a new watchman movement, but a new time of visitation and a new watchman call. And uh, with that, you always saw a new watchman call coming about in the Old and the New Testament. Every time you were at a key place of alignment like we're in right now, you see this new watchman call coming, and all of a sudden, people don't really know what to do with it. Think about when uh, uh, the Herod, the political structure, cut off James's head. They All the Jews got excited about that. The religious. See, you have to be careful with political and religion because... It, it, they're, they're working uh, many times to stop what God's doing. I don't see that right now. I don't see that window right now here. I see a window over us of opportunity to see a movement. Everybody say, see a movement. And so it becomes very, very key that we see this movement. Now, and remember, in that, he went to cut Peter's head off, and they started praying in a new way. And yet, I think this is what the prayer movement looks like right now. They're praying in a new way, but in the midst of praying in a new way, they're not sure what they're watching for. They started praying for Peter to get released. An angel comes down, shows up. In the midst of that, unlocks him. It says he wasn't even sure it was real. See, I don't think God cares what we think right now, whether it's real or not real. He said, I'm starting to move in incredible new ways. I'm moving in ways that will cause you to see me in days ahead. And then all of a sudden, they bring Peter to the door. He knocks on the door, and they slam the door in his face. That is not the watchman movement we're looking for. We're looking for a whole new watchman movement so that we see the kingdom beginning to be expressed. We're seeing that all of a sudden we say that is what we have been watching for and it's time. Everybody say it's time. So these are key. Now, this is what the Lord started saying to me for here. He said, now this new day and this new era is breaking in America. And he said, from state to state, border wars are beginning. Not just along the Mexico-Texas border. And not just along the border, the south border of America. He's saying that the borders of states are now going into warfare. Now, what that means to us is this. You have a portion you're called to secure. And it means that along your borders of your state, there are structures that do not want the inheritance of God to be established in those states. 
And so you're seeing states now, a whole new move of God has to come into our state networks, has to come into our state movements. And I think the bipartisan rule that we saw, and I, I believe uh, Mr. Bush was so honored for his bipartisan uh, ability, but I think that shifted. I don't think that if, I think you would be naive to think everybody's going to start working together. They're not. And somebody needs to say that. Things are going to get more and more uh, realigned. And it's necessary because, see, at harvest time, as we started, you have to see there has to be separations occur. And so you've got to watch the separations occur so you can see the new unity and the new remnants rising up. And it's important that we see that as we move into this church era that we're in, which really isn't a church era, it's a kingdom era. That's why you see more and more people looking at our nation, seeing our nation in a way that they've never seen it before, because we've come into a kingdom era. You can hear all the naysayers, religious naysayers, talking about dominionists, but that has nothing to do with anything. God gave us this land. God will judge us because of our stewardship of this land. He will judge us based upon the righteous rule that we bring into this land. He will judge us on how we multiply the resources of this land. God looks at that. When you look at judgment in the New Testament, you find it usually revolves around the resistance of Holy Spirit and where you've been given resources and you don't multiply them. And the Lord says we must see a turnaround in multiplication of resources. We must find resources that have never been uncovered. And we must begin to bring down the sound of heaven to uncover the resources. And you're going to see a lot of new coming. Now, here's one of the things that I want to say to us tonight. We're now battling confederations of demonic structures. We're not just dealing with a stronghold. And if you think you're just dealing with a stronghold, that's last season. This is a confederation where you see strongholds have aligned together, forming a cord of resistance. It's just like a resistant strain of... Uh, uh, that antibodies won't touch. And we're having to understand we must define our confederations. Now, I want to stop for a moment and I want to say this. Many of you know I wrote several times uh, back when the Lord visited me in 2008 and came down and showed me state to state to state what he was going to be doing. He showed me the states in alignment with him. He showed me the states not in alignment with him. He showed me what it would take to bring states in alignment. He showed me a move of God in every state. Uh, he showed me new centers. He called them freedom outposts where there would be incredible glory gatherings and when this this movement would hit one of those freedom outposts, they would go in one way and come out seven times brighter. He showed me strongholds from state to state to state, and at that point, I asked him, I, it was a four-hour visitation at Liberty Park uh, off of, uh, in New Jersey, and I asked him, I said, how, how will this nation change. And the Lord said it must learn to play the trump card. Now the Lord knew how he could speak to me for me to understand it. I come from a long line of trump card players. <laughs> I won the spade championship in college. I mean, I'm a trump card player. 
And then all of a sudden I began to realize the change that would have to come to bring us back. And the Lord began to give me a timing frame. Now, turn with me to Luke 12, verses 6 through 9. And I think being here at this time is key. And this is really why I feel like I had to come in December of this year. Because the Lord caught me into the future and showed me what was ahead. You know, we're in time in 2008, but all of a sudden he shows me 2016 and he shows me 2019. Now, in the midst of this, here was the passage that the Lord gave me. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Verse 6 of chapter 13 of Luke. And he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of the vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and found none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground. See, the Lord loves the ground. This year I've been in many, many native uh, gatherings. The Lord told me that when I was invited to uh, key first people's gathering, I was to go this year. But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, if not, then you can cut it down. And when the Lord visited me, he said, there's three years ahead. Because remember now, it's 2008, but I'm in 2016. See, God's not in time, and you don't have to be. That's why we're prophetic. You can remain bound by time, or you can allow him to show you what he wants to show you. Because when you're in the right place at the right time, like it says in Acts 17, all of a sudden, that word he predetermines, it means he pro-horizons your vision. He shows you beyond what you can see. This is what makes us a prophetic people. And he said... He showed me that after Mr. Trump came into office, never was a question because there was a determined, uh, a determinedness by the Lord to reset the course of covenant worldwide Amen. using this nation, which has been the strongest covenant nation in the world. Whether you like it or don't like it, it has been. So, it was amazing to see the realignment of Israel. Jerusalem, from America, actually. But what the Lord said was that Mr. Trump would have two tremendous years of conflict. And we've been up here where we've said if he'll just make it through these 10 months, he can keep going. And it's really not a man that we're dealing with here. It's a structure that is being dealt with. I don't, doesn't matter to me who's running the structure. I'm not real political. It's key that we understand that we have entered into a season of demonic confederacies. You from other states, you're going to have to understand the confederacies 
of your states and your regions and how they're working together. And I'm here to say, once you understand it, you can start dethroning it. And the Lord said there would be three years of opportunity for this nation. Now, this is the end of two years. And we need it to gather here. That's why you had to go through what you went through to get us to this place. I mean, thank God he used that Bible group. Look at somebody and say, thank God he uses the Bible group to get us in place. Because we were not positioned correctly. Because what we're about to decree now is the next year of acceleration of covenant. Covenant realignments, uh, realignment of uh, the remnant of God, which is way beyond race. So, Angela, you're going to see a lot of tumultuous racial issues in Chicago that brings it into its next place. You might think you've seen them, but this is bringing us cities into realignment. And it's going to accelerate. You need to make a list of the top ten uh, populous cities in your region. And you need to start decreeing realignment over them in the next year. You need to start decreeing that God set some down and put others in. We went to Chicago to worship out in the park there and decreed this was the time of change for that city. And you're going to have to get in the process of change. You're going to have to realize this year we're going to have more change than we've ever seen occur because there is this divine realignment from heaven that is penetrating earth and going down into the ground of this nation. And it's shaking the ground. It's going to shake it like it shook it in Alaska because that was prophesied. It's going to shake it all the way through Missouri, St. Louis, Oklahoma. It's going to shake it all the way up through New York into Maine. There will be a shaking. You will see great shaking this year because heaven is penetrating. And what we have to do is start standing as watchmen decreeing that nations are now in the multitude. Multitude of nations are now in their realignment season of choice. And I'm sure Rick will further you in understanding this. So let's end tonight with 2 Chronicles 20. See, I started looking at this new watchman anointing, and the Lord said, you must loose new strength for the year ahead to turn the battle at the gates. Now, we're not just in a gate war we're in a war of securing our boundaries. And this becomes very important. Now, I understand that in my own life. And uh, I've had to do some strange things to restore and redeem what my family had lost. Things that you, the world or the Christian world might not understand, but God knows what it takes to redeem a bloodline. And he is going to start redeeming this nation. Now hear what I'm saying to you. And in the process, any nation that we have influence over, we are going to call that nation into redeeming time for days are evil. Because, see, harvest is beginning to rise up in the earth. Last December, I was visited by an angelic host. I'd gone in to spend time in the room I spend time with, 
and I uh, fell asleep, and I was awakened from a dream, and standing there peering out into the future was an angel. Now, that hasn't happened to me like that. It's happened to me several times over dark angels, but not over something like this. And I really didn't know what to do because I had to make sure I wasn't dreaming. You know how that feeling you get. And I went and stood by this being, and I began to look at what he was looking at. And he was peering out, and the world was flat. And I, I travel the world, so I know what the world looks like. And all of a sudden, I would see the shafts of glory wheat with crystal top, diamond-looking tops. They would start coming up from places in the earth. And uh, it was amazing what... You could see the states they would come up in. You could see the nations they would come up It's going to be amazing when you hear of Iran breaking forth into, into this incredible harvest. See, it's not the way we think. It's not the way we see harvest. And I finally had enough nerve to ask this being who he was. I said, who are you? And he said, I am, the, I am the angel of war over God's covenant harvest plan. And he began to give me a seven-point outline of what is to come for our training. And we're now going into the second year of that training. You're being trained by what you're going through. Every circumstance, look deeply into it. God is visiting us with a message because He wants us to understand we are in a new era. And in this nation, He is bringing great changes. He's putting key people in place because multitudes, multitudes are in the valley of decision. And so in Second Chronicles 20, we find this confederation of demon forces. And again, let me go back. There are border wars going on. It doesn't matter if you are in a landlocked state. There are border wars going on. And we will define that as we go into the year ahead. Now, let me finish by saying this. Here you have Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir coming and confederating against Jehoshaphat and all of uh, Judah. And... Josephat, I, I liked what I read here in verse 3. Josephat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Now, I think we're going to hear it is time to seek the Lord this year, this year more than we've ever heard it. And when you hear that, don't poof it away. You need to say, okay, Lord, how do we do that? We're in a 21-day uh, prayer focus that has just been incredible right now. We're in the sixth day of it. And Joseph, he feared, and Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And the Lord says, there's remnants I am calling forth from city to city in this year ahead. And they will begin to watch and they will begin to proclaim what they are seeing. And they began to assemble for a decree. I do see more times of assembling here in D.C. And Jehoshaphat said, Lord, this is the inheritance that we have warred for. Why would you let this confederation come to take our inheritance. 
Now, I'm going to repeat again. There are confederation of demon hosts that are aligning against God's inheritance this year. And he is going to show us how to pull them apart one by one and dethrone those hosts. He's going to show us how to dig around our borders and fertilize it. He's going to show us how to move forward. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon this prophetic, uh, uh, on a prophet, and the prophet began to prophesy. And this prophet told them, that the battle wasn't theirs, but it was the Lord. And he said, you've, all you got to do is this. Go stand at a certain place and worship. Now, a lot of people say the battle's not, not ours. The battle's just the Lord's. You have to go stand at the right place and worship. Now, I'm going to get our worshipers to come back up here right now. He will orchestrate the place. And he says, when you stand and worship, I'll start sending in what is necessary to produce the confusion that will bring my order. Now, all of a sudden, since he orchestrated us to this place, and we start to worship tonight, all of a sudden this confederation that's trying to stop the move of God and the opportunities of God, all of a sudden this confederation is going to start being addressed and pulled apart. And what looked like chaos now is going to take a turn. Now let's stand up. And once they did that, and they began to sing, and we're just going to start by singing this. Praise the Lord. His mercy endures forever. Once they start sing, singing that, all of a sudden God came down, inhabited them, and started to work on the confusion that was in the atmosphere. Now just lift your hands. Father, we thank you that you brought us here. We thank you that we are here to stand and worship and you go to work for the year ahead to dethrone and the ancient of days to be seated in this land. Now in the midst of it, all the supply that the enemy was holding captive, all of a sudden, when all of this started to break, new supplies started getting all that supply. Took them three days to drag it in, gather it in. Father, we thank you that this is the beginning. That you are digging around this nation. Border by border by border. You're fertilizing it in a new way. And Lord, we're going to start seeing the harvest spring forth. We're going to start seeing our inheritance secured. We're going to start seeing what the enemy has been threatening to hold captive, given up. Now just... Lift your hand and wave it. Now as you're standing there, I want us to prepare an offering for lamplighter.
You can either use a credit card, you can use an envelope, you can have cash. And then I want us to just wave that offering before the Lord and say, Lord, this represents a portion of me that says you will fertilize, you will dig, and you will bring forth in a new way. Now let's sing sing this this as we worship. worship. Just sing, Just praise, sing the praise the Lord. Father, we say your goodness is about to rule. Your goodness is about to rule across this land from this nation. We say let realignment penetrate. Your mercy endures forever. Father, we thank you for this gathering. We stand and we worship. And we say, start invading that threefold cord of confusion over this city. Sing it. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Now, when you walk up here to present your offering, you decree harvest, fruitfulness in the next year. You decree that this year we will flourish and not be chopped down. You decree this is the beginning of flourishing. Now, Lord, we thank you. We say the confederation is shifting over D.C. today and key decisions will be made. Now, just come forward as you give. Decree prosperity coming back to this nation. Let's all just bring our offering to the altar. Just come on up front. Bring your offering to the altar here. And can we thank God for what He has brought forth tonight?
We are securing our field by sowing this seed tonight. You are securing your destiny. Lord, we declare this, God.
come away, come away. We call out, we call out to the broken. We cry out for the hopeless, commanding those in darkness. Come away, come away. We liberate the captives. We act to face the passive. We scream out to the masses. Come away, come away. That's our cry, isn't it? That's really what this move of God is about, that nations will be awakened. That is the midnight cry that unleashes the dream of God's heart, that we are drawn back to Him. I think we've all heard a midnight cry tonight, haven't we? What an extraordinary time. I want to give you guys a few brief announcements for tomorrow to prepare you for tomorrow. Number one, how many of you are staying at either the Hyatt Place or the Holiday Inn? My understanding is that we're, we have bus rides that are coming back and forth in the morning and in the evening. This has been arranged by the Museum of the Bible out of their generosity towards us when the circumstances arose that shifted us here. By the way, can we thank God again for the Trump International Hotel, their fabulous staff. They've been so wonderful. Tomorrow morning is very, very important. We have a very special surprise for you. Lamplighter family, last July, we prayed for Ambassador Sam Brownback and his first ever global ministerial on religious freedom. A ministerial held by the State Department means that foreign ministers are invited to come. That is the level of people invited to come to the convocation. And Ambassador Sam Brownback held the first global ministerial on religious freedom. He asked the Lamplighter intercessors to stand with him for this breakthrough that was occurring. And on 722, we went to the State Department to pray on July 22nd, knowing that God was doing something special. Our friend Pam Pryor. Uh, brought us into the State Department, and while we were getting credentialed, in walks Ambassador Brownback because he heard there was a prayer meeting. And he wanted to escort us personally to pray through the area where this convocation was being held. That is such an honor, and that touches my heart so deeply. We have governmental leaders throughout the Trump administration who love Jesus with all of their hearts and they are giving their all for this nation and for God's dream for this nation. This is worth every ounce of blood, sweat, and tears as God plays his trump card.
So anyway, Ambassador Brownback brought us up to his office, just the private Gideon group, a private group of high-level intercessors that we've convened together, leaders, prophets, intercessors, apostles, many of them with us. You'll be hearing from them throughout the conference. And we were in his office, and the first thing Ambassador Brownback does is he pulls out a picture of Andrew Brunson, the pastor who was imprisoned in a Turkish jail over unjust charges. And with his voice cracking, he read Pastor Brunson's personal note to him, seeking prayer. Well, after we all wiped the tears off of our face, we prayed Daniel 7.22, judgment in favor of Pastor Brunson, restraining the forces that were trying to hold him captive and releasing him to possess his portion from slavery and subjugation and imprisonment to freedom. Three days later, the global ministerial on religious freedom began. Three days later, Ambassador Brownback comes with his face beaming, addresses this global gathering, and says, Andrew Brunson has been released out of prison. You can't make this stuff up. It's a turnaround moment. He was released to house uh, confinement and then through the efforts, valiant efforts of the Trump administration, finally he was released. And, you know, Peter, when he was released from prison, he showed up at the door to the church while they were still praying for him. And they shut the door on him because they didn't believe it was him. There's no way Peter could be here. We're praying. And he came. Tomorrow you get to meet the answer to your prayers. Andrew Brunson is coming. Now a symbol for global religious freedom, a freedom movement has been released to the nations and the Trump administration and the State Department have been part and parcel of bringing this forth. turns out, of course, that Pastor Brunson is a dear, dear friend of Rick and Patricia Writings. Over many, many years, he's visited Sukkot Hillel many times. And the other person that touched my heart so deeply over many years, the past three years of just please pray for Pastor Brunson. I didn't even know who Pastor Brunson was until Rick brought his name before us and he's been mobilizing prayer on a global basis for this man of God who has an incredible incredible destiny ahead so I can't wait to see what tomorrow brings please be prompt on time the bus I believe is going to be yeah Jolene come give the directions Yes, Pastor Brunson is coming at 10 a.m. We do know that much. So we're going to worship and who knows what else, and then we'll hear from Pastor Brunson. I think we'll have a prayer time, and it's our honor to introduce you to a man whose, pray whose legacy was impacted by your prayers. Just going to, first off, like to thank you so much for being flexible. I know it's been a hard right turn for all of us, but um, I just want to give you details on the Museum of the Bible has paid for buses to come to the Hyatt and come to the Holiday Inn. Okay, so the schedule is on Eventbrite if you can't remember what I say. Okay, you go to Eventbrite, the schedule is how you will be picked up. Tonight at 10.30, they are coming to pick you up at Trump to take you to those two hotels, okay? If, if 
anything happens, there's this app called Uber, okay? <laughs> but we've done our best to try and get you all taken to your hotels and do what needs to happen, okay? So 10.30 tonight, a bus is out front to take you from Trump to Holiday Inn or the Hyatt if you have not made other plans. Tomorrow morning at 8, it's coming to Hyatt Place again to pick up the people at Hyatt. Now tonight, the buses, because they only had a day to put this all in place, are not as big as the other ones, so I don't know what the whole venue is that they're doing. We just got to be flexible, right? Everyone say hard right turn. <laughs> so tomorrow at 8, they're coming to Hyatt Place, but there are two huge buses that hold 56 people each coming to Hyatt Place and Holiday Inn's coming at 8 and 8.45. I guess Holiday Inn's going to help bus some people here, okay? Everyone got that? And if you, if you forget, it's all on Eventbrite, okay? All right, I bless you and I thank you for making the hard right turn with us. We've done the best we can to accommodate. I'm sorry? It's in between. So also tomorrow, after Pastor Brunson shares with us, we will have a break for about half an hour uh, because the Trump International Hotel wants to feed us breakfast. <laughs> Just as we had a wonderful buffet uh, for uh, hors d'oeuvres this evening, they are providing breakfast, and this is gourmet breakfast. So if you eat at the hotel, just leave some room for what you're about to experience. And then, in the evening, tomorrow evening, from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock once again, and Saturday evening, you will have a special dinner. So this really gives us an opportunity to connect. And can I just be honest with you? We have been together, taking this journey together for some six or seven years, a, a lot of us in this room. And it's been my desire for you to be treated as the kings and queens that you are, for royalty, for your sacrifice. And the Lord has honored our prayers, and you are being treated like royalty here, like the royalty you are, as just God's kiss for each one of you, saying thank you for your vigilance, thank you for your faithfulness, thank you for coming up against that brick wall again and again. Thank you for your years of tireless intercession fueled by hope that just doesn't die. And we're going to see his turnaround together. From our hearts, it's been an honor and it is an honor to take this journey with you. We love you. We respect you. We're grateful for you, and we hope that your voice will be heard throughout the weekend here. Please be generous in giving tips when you encounter folks and they're serving you. Please just extend that same generosity that you've extended to us. And um, in the name of the Lord. And so let's just uh, close out this evening with a, a word of prayer. Okay, I want to give you one other detail. If, if you've parked here, they're giving you a half price $26 fare to park your car here. So if you can consider that bringing your car, they're just going to, you know, 26 is still a lot of money, but it's half price. It's a half price deal. So now I'm going to pray for you, okay? So all they told me is you tell the valet that you're here at the conference and they will charge you the correct price. Yes, clear, clear, 
you can't save your seat for tomorrow, basically. I'm saving mine, but you can't save yours. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> now, now I'm gonna pray for you. <laughs> So, Father, I thank you for everything you've done. Amen. And, Lord, we just say how thankful we are. We are so thankful. And, Lord, I thank you for the grace you've given all of us to even be standing here. And the grace you've given us, Lord, to show how much you honor us as the kings and queens in your court. We are the kings and queens in your court, and you have need of us in this hour. And Father, I thank you that you have rolled out the red carpet for every one of us. I thank you for peaceful sleep tonight. I thank you for visitations. I thank you for the generosity of your heart that you pour out on each and every one of us. And we are so blessed to be your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.